There's no turning back now. There's Big Ten weather. There's a Big Ten banger that is coming in two and a half hours at noon. Unbeaten Maryland at Ohio State. That is Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. This are these are the keys, or this is the keys. Either way, I don't know. The keys, the keys. It's the important stuff for Ohio State against Maryland, where the Buckeyes have to come out of the gate fast. That's to me priority. Well, one. we're going right yeah, into. It. I'm not even messing around. Wow. This is okay. A game day in Ohio Stadium. It does feel like Big Ten football weather. It's a little bit chilly. There's a bit of a breeze. It's extremely gray at the moment. But uh, to me, that's a, coming off the bye week. I think. I, I know. I said it by week. I'm going to let people have it this time. Coming off of a, a week off, there's a tendency, I think, to come out a little bit slow and sluggish. And this weather and the atmosphere around here is a little deadish at the moment. So I think that there's a tendency maybe to buy into that and let it sort of take over your mood. But the Buckeyes have to fight that. So to me, you don't want Maryland to have any opportunity today to start to feel confident or to feel like they belong in this game. So the Buckeyes have to come out of the gate swinging offensively and defensively. Pressure on both sides of the ball, forcing Maryland to adjust to what the Buckeyes do best, which is passing the football and getting after Talia Tonga Viola. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, it's a weird juxtaposition, isn't it? Because I know that the previous stats and experience coming off of off dates don't really matter. Yeah. Um, but they can sometimes be predictive if there's a trend. And Ryan Day, with an extra week to prepare, is very, very good. So was the tailgate packed when we got here at 8 a.m.? Nope. No. Uh, is the sun out? It's trying to peek through the gray clouds over there right now on my left. No, it, it's a little bit sleepy. They're trying to crank the music up right now. I think maybe to, to boost that a little bit, the Buckeyes will be in here in about 40 minutes or so. Uh, you can see it's a little windy. Yeah, you, it's it's not like what you expect for a homecoming first Saturday in October, like where you skip straight from 90 down to 45 and windy. Yeah. So uh, it's... But the point about the pass is like Ryan Day, very good off of bye week. And Ohio State had a chance to rest up and recover and, and re energize a little bit. They're not going to be fully healthy, uh, which you'll find out in about half an hour what exactly that means. But just for no reason whatsoever, I'm going to say that Chip Trainum is a key to this game for Ohio State. Interesting. Uh, I think actually it's a combination of Chip Trainum and Mayan Williams uh, oh, okay. being very important for Ohio State. It seems now in retrospect, again, for absolutely no reason at all, a touch um, not coincidental that Ryan Day was bringing up Mayan Williams in a, in a very different way on Thursday at his lightning round media Multiple session. times. Uh, that Mayan had a great week and Mayan's ready to go and Mayan's ready to play. Um, this is why hypothetically you're glad to have five running backs right because you need multiple guys to get yourself through the season chip Trainum has proven himself to be one of the more valuable buckeyes on the entire roster in the first four weeks of the, of the season which heading into the year i'm not sure anybody would have had that circled as a as a likelihood but it may be an opportunity for him to show himself as a uh, true tailback today yeah i'm going to I'm going to go make a bold P that Chip Trainum is going to start this game for Ohio State. Wow. That's, uh, that's that's where I'm at right now. So if that's that combination, and we've seen Chip and mine in the backfield together just a little bit, is that part of the equation today? Would Chip potentially be in line to get just the full lion's share of the carries and just go be the tailback? I think he's earned the trust and the ability to, to deliver for Ohio State in that regard. We'll see what transpires there. I mean, that's really the only position that I'm looking at that uh, – could be of intrigue today. The rest, you know, obviously Marvin Harrison, Marvin Harrison Jr.'s ankle is worth monitoring. We talked about that on weekend kickoff and before. Like, it doesn't seem ideal that he's coming out and saying, "Hey, you know, this is more severe than the one that he dealt with a year ago." Is a 75% version of Marvin Harrison Jr. better than virtually every other receiver in the country? Yeah, probably. Well, what what, what percentage did we get of him a year ago when we didn't know yeah. he had an injury like, all like year? To know, and I, I think that that part is sometimes overlooked with Marvin Harrison Jr. The he's he's very willing to talk about his process yeah. and his injuries and everything that he does to get ready. Uh, but he does he's never used it as an excuse. Like he never brought up the ankle at all a year ago. Uh, but you see the stuff that he's willing to play through. He, I mean, he was angry after the Peach Bowl because he wanted to go back in the game and wanted his helmet. You know, the doctors pre prevented that. But he did the same thing at Notre Dame two weeks ago on the sideline. Like, 
he's I'm healthy. I'm running down the sideline. Give me my helmet. I want to go back in and doesn't miss a play. He's he doesn't I don't think get enough credit for his toughness. No, and that's because again he's not really ever been the type to make it an issue. If we had known a year ago he was dealing with an ankle issue that he suffered, he said in like I think he said the Notre Dame game or, or the Wisconsin game or something. Oh, yeah. Like so two or three. most of the season that it was an issue, if he would have ever said, by the way, I sprained my ankle pretty bad and I'm hurt, people would have asked him about it all year long. We only got a, a, a flavor of what's going on now because we watched and it looked like his leg got broken half at Notre Dame. So now people have something to talk about. But the wide receivers on this team have proven themselves to be tough over and over again. And this is not a, a recent thing. It's the culture of that room. And that's why I think those are the guys you lean on today. If, if you have any potential hypothetical changes uh, at tailback today. Um, you can always count on Marvin and Emeka, Julian Fleming and Xavier Johnson. It's Brandon Innes' birthday. I want to see him get a touchdown today for his birthday, his first career touchdown. So that's my bold prediction. Hello. Are you not? You're aware that Maryland is undefeated and one of the best teams in America, aren't you? Like, Brandon Ennis. How's that going to happen? Brandon Ennis is one of the best recruits in the country, and I think he's uh, going to get an opportunity to play some football over there. How dare you disrespect Maryland firm? Defensively, what is the most important thing for Ohio State? Is it pass rush? Yes. Is it, you know, a is, cap, is it a is it a orchestrated pass rush? Is it a, a blitz package? What is what's di- what makes the difference today? JT Tui Moloau and Jack Sawyer. Uh, if they're going to continue down this path of, of you are the primary guys, you're going to play virtually every snap of consequence, which I am. Fully in favor of that. Yeah. If those, if that is who Larry Johnson thinks his two best defensive ends are, then that's what that's the workload they should expect and they deserve in games that matter. Then you have to win your individual situations. You have to win one on one. You can't just hope that you're going to get help from Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers and other blitz packages. Win one on ones. These are not. This isn't Joe Walt on Maryland's offensive line. You need to go out there, assert yourself, fast off the ball, use your hands, get to the quarterback. Like, you got to play with some some reckless abandon from those guys, and like, they're good enough. Like both of them are good enough. There's not. I don't. I shouldn't even have to say it. They're both five star guys. They've been here for three years. They should be winning a higher percentage of their snaps that they're not. I talked about it on Monday. Like again, you can skew the numbers any way you want. Fifteen to eighteen percent win rate is not good enough for these two guys. No. And, and shouldn't be acceptable. And that's why I think it's another name that uh, Ryan Day mentioned on Thursday again. Asked about Caden Curry as a fullback. He mentioned Caden Curry's going to get a lot more reps for us on defense. Do I believe that? I don't know. I don't know whose entire call that is. But it seems like Ryan Day is asking for it, and the head coach asking for it should get it. Um, you know, the, the pass rush has to come from different angles against a guy like Talia. So you have to keep him contained in the pocket, So, but then you need pressure from up the middle between Michael Hall and Tyler Williams. This is one of those situations where we don't know if the noise behind us is loud in our microphones, but it's loud in my ears, so I feel like I'm screaming. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think this game is actually – all about the defensive line. How do you think they chose to do that, Rick? Right? Uh, that's a great question. I think that the defensive line is what makes or breaks this game. I have no doubt, no no concerns about the Ohio State secondary against this Maryland pass uh, attack. Number one in the Big Ten uh, in total offense. Maryland's number two in the Big Ten in passing offense. You know who they're behind? They're in passing offense? Yep. Uh, Michigan. Ohio State. Oh, Ohio State's good at passing the ball? Believe it or not, the Buckeyes have more yards passing per game than any team in the Big Ten. Uh, they're going to keep going, playing Thriller behind us. But again, I don't know if you hear it, but if you don't, I'm sorry uh, for yelling. This is not... Maryland a year ago had some really good weapons on the outside. I don't think they have that now. They're consistent. It's a little bigger, a little bit more of a, a ball control passing offense. So getting to the quarterback is what this is all about. Yeah, now there will there will be blitz packages. Like I, I, I've tried to make this point as well. There's There's been this narrative that Jim Knowles is playing way more conservatively and to some extent that is true uh, less blitz but le- less blitz pressure is not no blitz pressure you yeah. still have to have that to be part of your plan so we saw last year a little bit of I don't know if it was desperation or creativity like Denzel Burke was blitzing in that game Lathan Ransom was blitzing like pick and choose your spots I know Bill wrote and talked about dropping out the defensive tackles this week and how you know Tyleek Williams nearly made that pick against Notre Dame like it's you have to find the right opportunities for that. You can't go zero blitz throughout the whole game. And I don't mean the play itself. 
you're going to have to blitz at some opportunity to get Talia Tagovailoa off of his spot, make him uncomfortable. But at the end, that's only going to be a handful of plays that make a difference. Play in, play out. Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimolo will have to win. Like, point blank period. Let me ask you this question. Now we, we, we're here. It's game day. We know the vibe. We know the weather. Does your score prediction change based on today? Uh, let's just, let's, you know, we, we do the keys. Like, this is the vibe. What is the vibe right now? I, I, I think 41-17 is about right. I mean, I, I think that maybe given the hypothetical change, that would, like, dial back a little bit of the aggression that Ryan Day would normally feel for Maryland. But I don't, I don't think they're going to be threatened by the Terrapins. I don't think that the game is going to be particularly close. I would like to see the full-fledged, like, one of my keys, like, letting Kyle McCord yeah. actually run the full offense. And, like, you're going to be in worse weather than this. So if, if this bothers them that they can't come out and throw on Maryland when it's 45 and windy, that would not pretend very good things for the end of November. So I don't I don't think so. I think this still has the opportunity for Ohio State to, you know, turn a Mecca Vuka loose, yeah. loose, turn Kate Stover loose, and, and pull, pull away. Now, does it mean that they're going to score 70? Uh, as like is a real possibility when you play Maryland sometimes with, with Ryan Day's aggression? Probably not. I think you you still want to get through this week and as good of health as you can, get through Purdue. Like all sites are really on Penn State. I know that's not the way coaches talk or think. It's one game at a time, but we know that Ohio State's season is going to be determined in two weeks and then the last week of November. Like if and if Maryland threatens that today, then the conversation is going to be very different yeah. about this team. My my real only concern is if there's any sort of any Notre Dame hangover. That's the biggest one. I, I said it on the weekend kickoff. I think there's value in the fact that Ohio State didn't play a week ago, so you lose the opportunity for that hangover. Now we got Bill Collins blasting, but again, I don't know if you can hear it, but we can hear it. So that's probably a good spot to end it. It's going to be a fun day. It should be a good game. Um, and uh, you're going to see some, some, some Buckeyes. Some Buckeyes football. Football! Why do they, everybody wanted to make this as challenging as possible for us so that we can't hear or think or do anything, but hopefully you gained something out of the pregame keys. We are here at the Horseshoe. Thank you. Stop it. Yeah, it's so very weird. cool, very awesome. But they're trying to bring some juice into the shoe to get ready. Uh, kick off, what do we got? A little over two hours if to go. If you're a fan coming down here, bring your own juice. BYOJ. BYOJ. Uh, and then have a great time. It's We will be uh, back in here for some snap judgments afterwards. Bill and Doug will have the postgame show. Uh, about five minutes after this game ends. We'll have the notebook as well. So all the full coverage coming. Uh, two unbeaten teams. What more needs to be said? Big Ten onslaught becoming uh, underway here under, for Ohio State. Eight straight Big Ten games, starting with one against an unbeaten team. It's going to be critical in determining this East Division race. One team's leaving with a loss. Uh, we'll see who that is by 3.30 or so. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning on the podcast. For Burr, I'm awesome. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you later.